Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory. Today, um, this is Mary Gregory with MAS Coding Solutions. I cannot assume that everybody know who I am. Some of you all may have just stumbled up on this, <laughs> this YouTube video by mistake, but hopefully you will stay. Today, we are going to be having a brief coding clinic on coding some of the cardiovascular conditions. Now, cardiovascular, we know we're talking about the heart, we're talking about arteries, we're talking about veins. But this coding clinic is going to be focusing on the, um, the heart, conditions that we may have that relates to the heart. So I just want to um, do some of that. It's like I said, it's a brief coding clinic. You're not going to get everything you need. Um, you can consider joining our Facebook group, Be The Buzz, that will go live in February, uh, February the 10th, I believe it is. Uh, and uh, as part of that group and as part of our uh, new membership uh, that we're going to have, you'll get more in-depth uh, training. So today, let's talk a little bit, like I said, about cardiovascular. One of the big areas in the cardiovascular co coding is, of course, coding of a myocardial infarction, better known as an MI, or in everyday language, a heart attack. Uh, now, we have a coding guidelines that talk about heart attacks. Now, you as a coder, when you get a chart and they suspect that the patient had had an MI. Um, there are certain clinical indicators that's going to be in that chart. Now, there are a few people that have had what they call a silent MI. When they have a silent MI, that generally means the patient don't have any symptoms. Um, and But they have had this MI, but there was no symptom. But generally, most people are going to have some symptoms of chest pain, uh, they may even have shoulder pain, they could have jaw pain, um, they can have uh, high abdominal pain. That's why sometimes when a person comes in with uh, epigastric pain, pain up here that's high, they don't know if it's the heart or if it's the gallbladder, because see your gallbladder up there as well. And so sometimes they'll list epigastric pain. And you'll find later on, uh, if the patient stayed, that the patient actually have had an MI. Uh, this past year, I believe in 2020, uh, we currently have, for coding purposes, if you have your code book, you can go to I-21 in your code book. I-21. That is the beginning of the MI. Now, those are uh, MIs, uh, I-21, some of those MIs, you're going to code if they're associated, you have the documentation that it was uh, is associated in a very specific coronary artery. Now, generally, they can only tell that if they, deal, if they do some type of uh, cardiac catheterization or they may do an angioplasty if the patient have a blockage. But if they don't do that particular test, and maybe there's now some images that they could do that may show the blockage uh, in that artery that is causing that MI. But once again, you have to have that documentation. You also have now, we are able to capture what they call a quote, type 2 MI. Your type 1 MI is always due to some type of structure damage to the heart. That's a type 1. Usually some type of coronary artery disease. Uh, they may have some valvular disease going on. Whereas a type 2 MI is always pretty much caused by stress or it could be caused by drugs. But there's no structure damage to the heart. Um, and so once again, your physician will document that. He, will document, he or she will document that it's a type 1 or type 2. I want to say the rules say pretty much unless they documented a type 2, you have to assume that it's a type 1 MI. And so you have two sets of codes that you're going to have to use. Now, there's another uh, set too 
uh, M, there's some, all these different types of MI. You can have a type uh, 3, you can have a type 4A, 4B, uh, 4C, and a type 5 MI. I don't have those for you here, but I actually have a PowerPoint where it gives you the definition of those different types of MIs. And once again, your physician is going to have to document that. If your patient have a coronary, uh, sometimes they call it a coronary thrombus too. Uh, so watch out. Or they call it um, uh, coronary, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm having a block, so I better leave that alone. Um, but when they document an MI, you have to look at your documentation, okay? Uh, if that MI occurs before uh, any type of intervention, be it an angioplasty, be it a stent placement, be it a thrombectomy uh, that's going on, uh, you have to, uh, that's generally going to either be a type 1 or type 2. Sometimes a person will have an MI during, uh, during our, um, our interventional procedure. That's where those other different types come in. I think one of those types, 4A or 4B, actually say you have had an MI while having that interventional procedure. So in your coding guidelines, the one thing you have to remember about coding, when someone come in with an MI, that's generally going to be an acute MI. But also remember the coding guidelines will allow us to code an acute MI as long as it's within that four week time frame and or 28 days that some people like to use and, the phys and that patient is continuing to receive uh, some type of treatment. Uh, for that MI. And that treatment can just be medication. So watch out for that. Uh, when someone come, back, uh, come into the facility and your physician document they're coming in with pneumonia uh, but the patient had quote unquote a recent MI, it's your job as Dakota to find out what, what does that physician mean by recent. Do I, you need to go back if possible and try to put the picture together. So when he said recent you got to know what does recent mean to the physician. So a lot of times in my own personal coding, uh, when they say the patient, they're coming in with something else and say the patient had a recent MI, what I try to do is look back into that H&P uh, and see, you know, did, did they document any time frame like saying the patient had the MI in December and now he's readmitted in December. So I may have to try to track it down and, and look. Now, the one thing coders are not allowed to do is, you know, we cannot go back into previous encounter and code from previous encounters, but the CDI person can look at a previous encounter if it is relevant to the current encounter. So when the CDI is reviewing that chart, or you reviewing the chart as a CDI person, you may be a coder, but you're also a CDI. Now, so when you see recent, you can say, okay, let me see, because you're looking at it, and i got to be very clear with this, you can only do this from a CDI perspective. You cannot do it from a coding perspective. So that CDI person see where the physician said the patient had a recent MI. Now, they, gonna, they can look and say, did they have a recent MI at this facility? And let's say it was at your facility, and the patient came in on December the 30th, and they had an MI on December the 15th. Now the CDI, because the two are related, can generate a query and uh, really, and you know, ask the physician, I guess, to update, uh, put December in there, whatever the case may be. December the 15th or whatever. But a lot of times when you go back, physicians are pretty good documenters. Uh, some of them are, maybe not, every, not all of them, but some are. So you may go back to the H&P and they may actually say the patient was in the hospital recently between September the 15th and September the 20th with an MI. Now, I don't need to query the physician. That physician have given me the very specific time that that recent MI occurred, and it is within that four weeks. 
And so now that physician have documented that recent MI, um, they given the patient continued medication for the MI. I can code that MI as a secondary diagnosis. Because remember, secondary diagnosis is anything that requires therapeutic treatment, diagnostic monitoring, increased nursing care, increased the LOS. And so as long as he's doing something for that MI, let, let's say he called in a cardiologist uh, to see the patient. That means that they are doing something for that MI. So just kind of keep that in mind. I don't want to go too long today, but that was just a very brief coding clinic on cardiovascular coding. And what we did was today, we focused in on that MI. So remember, an MI can be coded as acute uh, as long as, of course, if they're coming in with an MI, you're definitely going to code it as acute. And if they come back in, they get discharged, come back in, or sometimes they may even go to a nursing home. And if they're continuing to receive treatment at that nursing home, they can code it as an MI as long as it's within that four-week time frame. So you do want to be uh, aware of that. Uh, some um, for long-term care as well because when we went to 10 they kind of changed the rules a little bit so always be uh, aware of that with your MI uh, let's see here I think that's it and remember when, when you're dealing with a type 2 MI uh, a type 2 MI can never be the principal diagnosis anytime you do a type 2 MI the underlying cause for the type 2 MI has to be the principal diagnosis. So remember that and that will keep you out of trouble. Hopefully you got a good system that tell you if you did a type 2 of the principal, hey you can't do that and they will change it. That will end our coding lesson for today. I want to thank you all for being with me today for our coding clinic, for our first coding clinic of the new year. And we'll be doing more coding clinics and I invite you all to join us. And remember you can always follow me on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn as well. Our um, what email? Not email. Our website is uh, www.mascodingsolutions.com. And don't forget, we will be creating our new Facebook group called Be the Buzz. Uh, it'll start go live in February, February the tenth. Forward to you all becoming a member of Be the Buzz. We'll be doing more of this.